As you know, if you've been watching the channel for any amount of time, you know that I've been on a browser journey of sorts for the last two years. It's been a long journey, and it's been a harrowing journey. I've tried all the browsers at this point. I mean, it's been kind of crazy. I've switched browsers more than I've switched Linux distributions. And that's kind of saying something. For the most part, most of my time over the last two years has been spent in Firefox. And Firefox is great. I have problems with Firefox. I've made videos about how Firefox is broken before. I have issues, but for the most part, Firefox has been my daily driver. And despite that, I still have been looking for greener pastures, if you will. And I've tried Microsoft Edge. I pissed a lot of people off by making a video about it. And, you know, I used it for about a week and a half and then it, you know, decided to suck. And, you know, I've used Vivaldi before. I had some issues with that. I've used Brave and decided I hated, hated some of the things that Brave does. Uh, I've used Chromium before. I, I've used, uh, on Google Chromium, I've used LibreWolf. <laughs> I've used them all. I've even used Cute Browser before. And, uh, I didn't have a great experience with it because Cute Browser's ad blocking is just atrocious. It's not good at all. It exists if... You count that as a win, that's great. I mean, it gets a certificate of participation when it comes to ad blocking. It, it, you know, whatever. But it doesn't work. I mean, I've had multiple people come up to me and tell me that Cute Browser has amazing ad blocking and it works just fine and it uses brave ad blocking, you know, technology or something. Uh, sure, maybe that's true, but it, it's terrible. It's not good. So that turned me away from Cute Browser for the longest time. But this past Sunday, I decided I was going to give Cute Browser a try again. And I went through and uh, customized it and got a config going. And by that, I mean I took Tyler's config and made it my own. Um, that's, I mean, that's what you do, right? And I've been using it ever since. Today's Wednesday, and uh, I have some thoughts. So let me start off by saying that I'm going to stay with Cute Browser. I really like it. There's a lot of stuff here that I really, truly do enjoy. And I think that if I left it behind, I would miss those features. So uh, there are definitely pluses to Cute Browser that are that have made me decide to stick with it at least for quite a bit longer, more uh, more than three days, I guess. But there are also some things that are just a little bit weird, and some things that are just downright bad. So I want to take a, a moment to talk about a few of my good experiences and a few of my bad experiences with Cute Browser. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this is what my cute browser looks like right now. I've gone through and I've like I've themed it and stuff and made it look like grub box and stuff. And I've added some key bindings and stuff that even Tyler didn't have. And for the most part, I'm in love with it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I like that I can hide the tabs and stuff and make them go away. Uh, so there's literally no Chrome whatsoever. That's awesome. There are, is one feature that you can add via key binding that will allow you to open up a a video from YouTube in MPV. So I can just hit capital M and let's just say I wanted to do this one here and I can it will open up after a moment. It takes a little while. It will open that up inside MPV. And what that does is gets me past my biggest complaint about Cute Browser, which was ad blocking. Because while Cute Browser will block most like display advertising it will not block any video advertising at all. Like, it's kind of bad. But using this workaround, it'll get me past advertising on YouTube. And, well, as someone who makes money off from advertising on YouTube, I probably shouldn't be telling people to bypass advertising. Uh, I'm one of those people, I can't stand mid-roll ads. So, for the most part, I don't mind watching a pre-roll ad. Uh, I'll sit through those. But a lot of creators enable the mid-roll ads and they like interrupt the content. It drives me absolutely bonkers. I just can't abide by it. So this gets me past that. And it's awesome. It's, I mean, it's really, really good. And it even works for stream. So if you have a creator that you follow that is streaming, you can open, a, open that stream up in MPV and it will actually stream in MPV, you know, without having to go through and deal with any of YouTube's crash. You could actually close YouTube if you wanted to. Like I like I I have this video open up here. I could close YouTube and you know the video is still there. I can still play it in the background. You can there's also a way you can go through and create it so that it's just audio only. 
if you wanted to do that. And you can have a, a key binding so that it will download the video to your your hard drive if you wanted to save it for later. That's really, really cool. I also like the fact that it has a configuration file that you can mess around with. So if we open up my configuration file, so if I go to cd.config, cute browser, and we go into config.py, we can actually go through and see that this has a, an, you know, a huge amount of options that you can mess around with. And I don't even think that this is all of them. And in fact, I know it's not because I've gone through and added a few things uh, to this configuration that Tyler didn't have that makes it a little easier. So I've set the default zoom. I've set the uh, default to save the session so that when I close Cube Browser and then open back up, it remembers all the tabs that I had open. I love that. I also set a start page. Uh, which I actually never see because of the, the save session thing, but at least it's there. So I like that it has a configuration file. I, I, technically, I suppose Firefox has config files as well, but you never mess with them. You do all the configuration for Firefox and all those other browsers uh, inside their their settings applications or settings pages or whatever. So uh, I like this because I'm a terminal nerd, so I like configuring stuff through the terminal, and this is you know kind of awesome. Uh, so, let me talk of, for a minute about the key bindings that I have either inherited or uh, added myself. So, there's a few of them here. So, these are the, these MPV ones will allow me to go through and either play the video like I did before by hitting Control M, or not Control M, Shift, uh, Capital M. And then if I wanted to do it without any video at all, if I just wanted to play in the background, like say if it's just music, I hit Capital P, and that will play... A video with just the audio that's really cool and I've also gone through and, and added this one here this is capital F and basically what this will do is it will allow me to open up a link in Firefox and you're probably wondering why would I want that well here's where we get into the, some of the things that are kind of bad about cute browser first thing there are definitely more websites that don't work in cute browser than don't work in Firefox I've always had some problems with rendering in Firefox apparently mostly it's just me but compared to Cute Browser, Firefox is flawless because there are definitely a lot of quite a few websites that I go to, and they're big websites that just don't work. The biggest example I have of it is Tumblr. Now, most people don't go to Tumblr these days, it's kind of a dying social platform, but I still use it for multiple things. I've been there for years, and you know, I have people that I follow over there. Judge me if you will. Uh, but Tumblr won't work. For whatever reason, you go to Tumblr and the key bindings for Keep Browser just completely stop working. Tumblr will actually warn you that says this browser is not com you know uh, compatible with our website. Are you sure you want to proceed? So that's a problem. Uh, there, there are a couple other ones that are smaller than Tumblr that I, I have the same problems with, where things just don't work quite as well as on other websites. Uh, it's not a big deal. What I've done is I just have Firefox installed. Or I've kept Firefox installed, and when I need to go to Tumblr or one of those other websites, I go to Firefox for that thing. Uh, and then I close Firefox and come back to Cute Browser. It's not a big deal. It's not the way I want to use my computer, because I really prefer to have one browser. But this definitely is uh, a workable solution. It hasn't turned me away yet. Honestly, the, the biggest problem I've come across with Cute Browser isn't the functionality of some websites or anything like that. It's the fact that it uses a shit ton of memory. Now, granted, my uptime right now is at 100 and almost 170 hours. And I had an incident of Cute Browser open up for that almost the whole time. And that's apparently not a good thing because Cute Browser at one point was taking 10 gigabytes of memory. That's a lot of memory for a browser. It reminds me of the olden days in Firefox when Firefox had that huge memory leak and it would literally never clear itself of, of memory. Like it, it, you open up a tab it, and even if you close that tab, that tab would stay in memory. And it would do that forever, and you just it just kept ballooning and ballooning and ballooning in terms of actual memory usage, and it, it, you know, until you actually ran out of memory. Uh, Cube browser seems to do the same thing, and I'm not sure why. Uh, the longer you use it, the more memory it's going to take. Now, that's not a huge deal for me. I have 64 gigabytes of memory. I never use that much, so it can use as much as it wants. It's, I'm probably never going to run out, but it's definitely a worrisome thing that kind of bothers me. Mainly because I would like to know why, right? Because I'm not. It's not as if I, if if you look here, I, it's not as as if I have a ton of pet tabs open. I have three pinned, uh, and I have, 
you know, three open ones, and that's about my average. Sometimes I'll have a couple more, but it's not like, like I have 60 tabs open or something like that. That's I, I, I'm I not that messy. Uh, I use a tab, I close a tab. Uh, every once in a while I'll have one that I have open for a little while, like I've had this Discord thing here uh, open for quite a while because I'm going to eventually try to do this, so I have it just saved here instead of saving it as a bookmark, but eventually that will get closed. So it's not, you know, as if I have a ton of tabs, and it just takes a ton of memory. So if I open up, uh, I think I have uh, HTOP open here, and we do the a search. Now, it's going to be a little bit skewed because I have OBS running. So OBS is actually taking 1.5% right now. But if we scroll down just a little bit, we can see that Q Browser is in second place with almost a whole percentage point of my memory. And I'm not sure if this is a percentage point of the total used memory or if it's a total uh, percentage point of all the memory available. I'm not sure how HTOP does that. It's not a big deal. But at one point, that number was at like 15 or 16%. And at the total number of users was at like 10% or something like that. Or 10 gigabytes or something. I don't know. I, I freaked the fuck out and closed Cute Browser because it's like, why is it using this on his memory? Like, like it's, it was like... What's going on here? It's just really weird. So uh, that's my biggest complaint about Cube Browser so far. But again, it's not something that I'm worried about. You see, I have, maybe because I have plenty of memory, uh, uh, it doesn't bother me as much. But I think that it would bother me if I was like on, the, on that computer behind me that only has eight gigabytes. And if that was you, if Cube Browser was using, you know, a half of the memory on that computer, it would be much more. Uh, it would affect me much more than it would on this computer that I'm sitting in front of. So that'd be a big deal on a computer that's much more memory constrained. But they're just there are way more positives for Cute Browser for me than the negatives. The, I mean, the two negatives that I've talked about, the some of the websites not rendering and that memory problem, just aren't going to drive me away because there are so many good things. So I, I showed you the 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 video thing where you can pop a video out. That's one thing that's really cool. Another thing that I I, I just I don't see myself being able to. Uh, leave behind is its integration to, to use a word with Google Docs. Now, it's this is not actual integration with Google Docs, but because of the way Cute Browser works, I have Vim keys in Google Docs. I mean, <laughs> I use Google Docs all the time. I use it for tracking word counts for things that I write. I keep I have another spreadsheet for all the words that I write professionally, which I can't show you. Uh, I have a uh, uh, databases of, you know, stories that I've read or or th other things that I just use all the time. I, mean, I, I use Google Docs all the time, and the fact that I can now use Vim keys in order to navigate it is awesome. Another thing that's really cool is because I'm using Vim keys, I can actually go through and use insert mode. So I just insert mode, and then I can type in in the the thing, right? And then I can get out of insert mode and back, go back to using Vim keys. That's just something that. I don't think I could ever live without now because, I, I mean, granted, I could use in any other browser, I could use the arrow keys, right? Uh, but I've gotten so used to using the Vim keys in Vim that I try to use them all over the place. And the fact that I can now use them in Google Docs as well is just amazing. I mean, it's so, so good. Um, and now I'm, I know a lot of people are going to be upset because, well, Matt, you use Google Docs. You're a FOSS advocate or whatever. Like, I have to use Google Docs for a lot of things for work. So I a lot of that usage also tends to translate to some of the things that I use it for personally. So I use Google Docs. I kind of can't get away from it. I know I could use something like NextCloud or whatever, uh, but I don't uh, have a NextCloud right now. So maybe someday I could do that uh, and then create a bridge or something between that and Google Docs. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Tangent aside. The Vim keys in usage for not only Google Docs, but for the rest of the browser is amazing because you use them to scroll, you can use them to open links, you can use it to go back and forth. Uh, I mean, it's just so good. I just really, truly enjoy that w way of navigating a browser. Now, it's not as if it's completely new because in Firefox, I had something called Vimium, I think it was called, or maybe it was called Zvim, Zvim or something. I don't know. It was maybe, actually, I think I used Vim Vixen in Firefox. And that gives you some functionality where you can use the Vim keys to scroll and all that kind of stuff. But it doesn't do the other stuff. Like, it doesn't have, like, insert mode and stuff like that because, you you know, it just doesn't. So, you because it doesn't have the insert mode, you, can actu you can't actually use the Vim keys in something like Google Docs because you're always, if you hit J and K, you're going to start typing J and K. So, 
it's not quite the same. It's so much better in Cute Browser. One area that I've decided not to explore at all is the the marking system. So it, Cute Browser does have like its own bookmarking system, but I've decided not to use it at all. And the most reason is because if I end up switching away from Cute Browser, like in the future, which is possible. I mean, I've, I switch browsers like crazy. I don't want to have bookmarks saved in Cute Browser and then lose them later on because it'd be much harder to get those bookmarks back into like a, a normal GUI browser. And I don't want to have to, like I said, I don't want to lose those. So I've just been using my script that I have written that will allow me to have browser independent bookmarks. And that seems to work just fine. So I won't be exploring that at all. So that that is my experiences with Cute Browser so far. And, and like I said, I really, really like it. Now I have a, a bet with Peter, one of my subscribers and one of the people who follow me on Twitter, that I'll, I'll only be on Cute Browser for four or five days. I'm on day four right now. So yeah, I think I'm going to make that. And I don't see myself switching away from it. There's the, the Google Drive or Google Docs integration thing that I talk about and that popping out of of videos is just too good to not have and I think I like Firefox or I think that I like Cute Browser quite a lot and I don't see a need right now to switch back to Firefox so I think I'm gonna win that bet. Do you use Cute Browser? If you do let me know in the comments below. If you've tried Cute Browser and, and have left for whatever reason also let me know that. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Uh, before I go I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is fun too. Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Joshua Lee, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Art Center, American Camp. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.